Black Nouveau. Hello and welcome to Black Nouveau. I'm Milton Dockery. Faith Covers is under the weather this week. On this edition, we have a lot of theater news for you. We'll preview the Wiz and learn about Uprooted's production at the College Museum. We'll discuss how the new credit card reform bill may affect your pocketbook and your credit. And we'll talk with Doris Cope, author of Freed Woman's Dance. But first, the Wiz. The first stage children's theater has, has mounted a production of the Tony Award winning musical. Liddy Collins has a backstage preview. You can start the talk. These are young people, 9 to 19, with a few adults sprinkled in as they prepare for the first stage children's theater's production of okay. The Wiz. So make sure better to get here. The Wiz, the musical, came to the stage in 1975. The people who owned the rights to The Wiz thought it was time for The Wiz to reach a new audience. So they approached the First Stage Children's Theater about putting on The Wiz for a younger audience. Nowadays, what kids know about The Wiz is through the movie. So they come knowing the music and knowing the story, but mostly from the movie with Diana Ross and Michael Jackson. I have seen it twice, I would say. It's, it's very different from what we are putting on. In, our version is more about the story of friendship and love and just more the kid version in comparison to the, the streets of New York and then the scariness of this new world. This is a shorter version of The Wiz that can be appropriate for small kids, big kids, and family. <laughs> This particular version is African American in focus. It's a story that applies to everyone, so children of all races would appreciate it. And every child goes through a coming of age, every child goes through a time when they're not happy with their parents and they realize later how much they love their parents. So this story is always going to resonate with everyone. <laughs> characters in the wings? Oh, so we start with Dorothy, the young lady who is having trouble with her aunt and her uncle. Then um, she has her aunt and uncle, aunt, aunt, uh, aunt and uncle Henry. She lives with them. They're not her parents, they're her, they're her relatives. And then she goes on the journey away from Kansas and there she meets the lion, she meets the tin man, and she meets the scarecrow. These are her traveling companions. They're all in search of something to make their lives better. And along the way, they meet witches, wicked ones and good ones. They meet Atta Pearl, the funny witch. They meet Eveline, the evil wicked witch of the West. And they meet Glinda, the beautiful witch of the North. If you believe within your heart, you know that no one can change the path that you must go. Glinda's a little jazzy. And Auntie M is very soulful. Put your arms around me, child, like when you bumped your shin. So she's a little gospel in flavor. And Miss Glenda is jazzy in her flavor. Stop raining. Well, I think it's nature's way of paying back that old witch. Well, how come she don't just the roof fix? Notice the new picture that I got with the 10 miles is off the place. What is your favorite section of it or favorite song that you will be doing? My favorite section, well, home is a very, when I have to leave my friends, it's, it's hard, but it's like, it's finally when Dorothy has grown up, sort of, that's when her character has climaxed, and it's just a beautiful song and a beautiful ending. Do you sing that? Yes, Can I you do. give us a taste? Um, and just maybe I can convince time to slow up Giving me enough time in my life to grow up time Be my friend Very good. Are you alright? Yes, so. Looks like a witch that you do. Carrying all the water out of this place. She's got the scarecrow and the tin man doing it too. I heard about eating the water. 
Uh, you know that lady so afraid of water, she doesn't even take a bath. She doesn't? No, she just sends herself out to be dry clean. What song do you think will grab the audience? Oh, I think for the kids versus the adults, it's going to be different. I think all the adults will always love Be a Lion. It's a beautiful ballad, and Dorothy and the lion cement their friendship, and the lion finds its courage. It is soaring, and it's exquisite. It's the last big song that we're doing in Act One. So I think the adults will always love that. But I think the kids are going to like the ones with lots of flash and color, and I think they're going to probably like um, Brand New Day. That's a big number that has a fun beat and there's lots of color and movement. So I think they're gonna like that after, after the Wicked Witch is destroyed. <laughs> well, I've got them all, and I'm already planning my menu. First, soft soup with hazelnut and sour cream, and brisket of lion pie. Order a home fries for dessert, cheese pudding, then my slim bag. Glass and ask for Dorothy. Well, well, well. I don't remember telling anyone to take five. Oh, please, Miss Witch. I haven't seen the line since I've been here. So what? To skip back to work. I want you to scrub the floors, vacuum the rugs, polish the silver, and you do do windows, don't you? <laughs> and you. Get that water out of my sight! Dorothy, wait. When are you going to give me those lovely silver slippers? I can't. I'll give you all my beauty too. Oh, Mama, don't nobody want those. I'll never give you my silver slippers. Oh, get it, Dorothy, you little rat! First stage children's theater production of The Wiz runs through March. The Wiz is one of the latest productions in the season that has offered a number of African-American-centered projects. The Milwaukee Rep is currently featuring Radio Golf, August Wilson's last play in his 20th century cycle of 10 dramas, and the Milwaukee Multicultural Theater will reprise M, a collection of mothers, in April at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. There is also a new group, Uprooted, which has mounted a production of the Colored Museum. George C. Wolfe's satirical look at the historic struggle of African Americans. Here is a clip from the 1991 PBS version. Enter Walter Lee Bo Willie Jones, Mama's 30 year old son. His brow is heavy from 300 years of oppression. Son, did you wipe your feet? No, Mama, I ain't wiping my feet. <laughs> Out there. Every day, Mama, is the man. The man, Mama. Mr. Charlie, Mr. Boss Man. And he's wiping his feet on me. On me, Mama. Every damn day of my life. Now, ain't that enough for me to deal with? Ain't that enough? <laughs> And we're joined now by Marty Goldman, uh, co-founder of Uprooted. Marty, welcome. Thank you so much. Marty, tell us about Uprooted. It's fairly new. Uprooted began with uh, three other individuals in the theater arts profession and myself who decided that there just wasn't enough African-American theater that was being presented to the Milwaukee public. Okay. And we wanted to make sure and offer a fresh voice that uh, could speak to a lot of the issues old and new in the African-American community. Thus the name Uprooted. Thus the name Uprooted. What type of cast members are you looking for? We are looking for everyone. We do want to intermingle um, all races on stage mm -hmm. and make sure that the story is told uh, by using all skin tones, but there will always be somebody African-American in our productions or someone that has their hand in the, the raising okay. of a production. Okay. And, and, and why the play The Colored Museum? The Colored Museum is a fantastic play, a uh, satirical look at black history, and uh, it's just a humorous way to reintroduce uh, the theater going public with what we've come through with laughter, tears, and where we are now. Tell us a little bit about the production. The production uh, is several vignettes directed by Dennis F. Johnson, yeah. and uh, it hits all of the highlights of black history, including our theatrical offerings mm -hmm. from uh, Entezake Shange to Lorraine Hansberry. Uh, uh, George C. Wolfe is the playwright who has been uh, 
working in, of course, the theater community for many, many years. Okay. Now, you just finished Yankee Tavern at the Milwaukee Rep. You I do did. a lot of theater. Tell us a little bit about Marty the Person. <laughs> well, Marty the Person is crazy busy all the time, <laughs> but enjoying what I do. Yes, I've been working as a professional actor in the Milwaukee area for two years and have, do all sorts of things, commercial, print work, and then, of course, have jumped uh, to most of the equity houses in town performing as an actor. I live in Fort Atkinson with my family and happily commute to Milwaukee. I, I love the city. Okay. I love the city. Are you a native Wisconsin? I am person? not. I am from San Diego, California. Alrighty. Tell us a little <laughs> about how it's San Diego to, <laughs> all the way to Wisconsin. That's a, that's a, that's a big shift. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, as it happens many times, it begins with a man okay. <laughs> who uh, just, I met a wonderful man who uh, is from Wisconsin and eventually we ended up back here in his hometown. Okay. Now back to the original point. You do a lot of theater. How did you get into theater? I got into theater actually always loving to public speak and started at the age of 11 in community theater doing musicals from 11 to 18 and continued to work in the industry as a makeup artist and as an actor uh, in California and then uh, moved to Wisconsin about 10 years ago mm -hmm. and hit the scene about two years ago. Okay. Now, when and where will people be able to see this play? Uh, the uh, Colored Museum runs at the 10th Street Theater in Tandem Theater Company, uh, March 18th through the 22nd. Uh, yeah, you can get tickets at www.brownpaperbag.com and enter in the event number and everything will hop up. If someone is interested in being a cast member, they can find that information on your website also? Absolutely, and please contact me. Uh, okay. That is www.uprootedmke.com. We would love to hear from new talent. Any other productions on the horizon you want to tell us about? We are excited. We've entered into two projects, one with the uh, Gag Arts uh, community and we are doing a play called Pink Champagne okay. and then also with Renaissance Theater Works we're doing a period piece called Crumbs from the Table of Joy which set is set in uh, the 50s okay. and uh, so we have several things coming up and uh, you can always check our website out to see the fresh new things that often okay. jump up. Anything in relationship to children? We are working on that <laughs> and certainly we have an education program that we'd like to implement but we want to make sure that we have all our ducks in the row and certainly uh, we offer uh, performances for school situations if they'd like to come in and do a doc talk back with the actors okay. and or director and production staff. Okay. And Marty, I know you've mentioned this already, but if people want to get more information, how can they go about it? Uh, they can find us two ways. You can get tickets to the Colored Museum at www.brownpaperbag.com and then our personal website, www.uprootedmke.com. Find out about the founding members, what we've done in the past, read some articles, hear some clips of our performances, and certainly you can contact us that way. Marty, thank you so much. Thank you. Alrighty. A successful professional from Seattle, Washington, who today celebrates life. That was not always the case. In her book, A Freed Woman's Dance, which she said is a healing tool, she tells the story of her childhood abuse. If we talk about the economic uh, setting first, we can say that I was down south in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we were growing up in an area called Churchville, and Churchville was founded by the slaves uh, right after Reconstruction, and it was called Churchville because there was church on every corner, and um, it was priests civil rights days and our family had a little business in the community and they lost the lease on the business when I was nine and they moved that business into our house. What kind of business was and it? And it was um, what we would call a juke joint or they called it a splow house and in that house we sold moonshine liquor we sold chitlins we sold fried fish and there was it was just a bar and so my parents moved their customers and their arguments and that cigarette smoke and all of that stuff into our house at uh, when I was nine and when you mix all the things I just named with a little curious little girl, you got a poisonous combination in the form of child abuse, uh, sexual abuse. I was nine when my mother's customers started molesting me. How did you get past your childhood pain? Well, it was a process. It wasn't an event. Um, I ultimately joined 
the Air Force and the Air Force saved my life and that for the first time I had the opportunity to get education so education was a tool out. I had uh, psychological care or access to it. Um, I just went and talked to old ladies. I had a friend who was 85 and I sat on her, her couch in addition to having the formal uh, care. So, uh, and then finally, when I got to seminary just a couple of years ago, I recognized the fa fact that this type of pain, there is no statute of limitations around that, that I had a right, even though my hair is silver now, to own that pain and, and clearly, clearly to get through it. And so uh, the writing itself was a healing stream. And is that how you, how did you heal yourself? Is that what you did? Yes, in the in the writing, I, I was able to go back and revisit the brave little girl who used to be me. I was uh, I was always uh, ashamed of the fact that I used to um, be very dirty and unkempt and no dental care, no care of any any type. And so I was able to go back and embrace that little girl for the way that she had dreamed of getting out of that situation and how life just opened up and that little girl stepped forward and claimed her own right to health and well-being. How do you and have you encouraged people that they too can survive their pain? Absolutely. As an example, um, three weeks ago I was speaking before a group of 65 women and most of them were African American women, although there were uh, several Caucasian women in attendance. And I read three or four excerpts from the book and the host opened the floor up so that other women could come forward and there was such an outpouring. There was people were crying for themselves and for their grandchildren even and um, there was one woman who ended up just vomiting and throwing up all of this pain and that helped me know that A, I had done the right thing in writing the book but B, that it is a, an, a huge encouragement to people to speak out as the first point of healing. I was surprised by the way this book was written. It wasn't in your face. It wasn't hostile. How did you come up with that style? Well, a um, couple things. I wanted not to be such a historian. I wanted to really give the reader some sense of how life was. And so while these other things were going on, there was a culture, there was a neighborhood, there was there were parents, there were children, and so I wanted to he let the reader hear how that culture um, evolved and how we, we all evolved in that culture. And so I wanted to humanize the statistics around uh, abuse. One in four girls is abused before she's 18, and one in six boys abuse and so I wanted to make the story um, approachable for people who are uh, still suffering so I decided to take the take the uh, reader inside our neighborhood. The title of Freed Women's Dance means what? It means the determination to claim all that is human, all that is joyful, all that is rich within each one of us. And every, every woman, every person has this beautiful humanity in them. And sometimes we cover it up with things, material things, and sometimes it's stifled with pain. And so a freed woman's dance is the result of moving into your own inner treasures and celebrating them. A freed woman's dance is available online at www.scapefoundation.org. The recent credit card reform bill passed by Congress was designed to help consumers, but opponents fear the bill may prevent poor consumers from getting credit. Here to help us sort out the bill and other consumer credit issues are Lydia Beasley and Corey Benson, 
from the Milwaukee chapter of the National Association of Black Accountants. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Corey, what was the intent of the bill? The intent of the bill was just basically to get lenders to reorganize the, the amount of interest that they charge. So right now, the current issue is before any, um, before a bank can change the interest rate, you have to get a 40, a 45 day notice from the, the lender or the bank before they can adjust it. And um, um, two, they're, they're changing the way that they target college students. Okay. Now college students cannot easily get credit cards. Mm -hmm. The thing is they will have to either have a co-signer or they will have to have a show the capabilities to actually uh, okay. fulfill the credit card payment option. Now, Corey, so. now, now, now also now, some of these credit card companies raise these interest rates prior to this bill going into effect. Uh, does that bill deal with any of those issues? N yes and no. You will see credit card companies, they will drop some of the interest rate, but more so, you will see other additional fees come into play. Okay. Now, 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 now Lydia, will this bill affect those who are less fortunate ability to get credit? Well, it will on, on the on the premises that, you know, though they're sending out the notice, they may not have an option, you know, so the, in that way it will. They may not have an option to change to another credit card. How, was, how, how would this bill affect that or cause that to occur? What'll, what, well, what will happen is, is, you know, and what happens is, you know, I've got, I've got a certain rate. Okay, so the notice comes through and they change my rate. So immediately now my payments are going up. You know, so what I could do now is have a bad history of paying because I can't meet those obligations as they are right now. So, yeah, I can, you know, I can opt to say, nope, I don't want that credit card anymore. It's too high. But then I'd have to pay it off. Okay. So, in many ways, it makes it more difficult for those who are less fortunate to get available credit. Well, it makes it kind of ambiguous, okay. you know. They've got to come up, you know, d when they said this, when they changed this, they also should have said, you know, come up with a plan in case you need to pay this off. You okay. know, start start now before, you know, while this bill is getting ready to go into act. Start now because your credit card company is likely to up your fees. Now, uh, um, how do we get people who are less fortunate? ahead in the credit game. You know what, I think it's very interesting and I think, you know, if they really played the game, this is a way to me that they even the playing field. Because if you look at, you know, typically we look at someone who is very wealthy and say, you know, oh, they have it all together. But that's not true. You think about, okay, if I'm very wealthy, but I pay my bills whenever I want to. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter. It does matter, you know, what your income is. Then on some levels, as far as the rating, no, it doesn't. You know, do you pay your bills on time? So, so though it's, it's important for those who are less fortunate, at least to pay their bills on time. Yeah. And that makes credit available. Yes, In exactly. most cases, shall we say. Exactly. You know, you just go back to the simple process which everyone already knew. Live below your means. Okay. And as long as I live below my means and I'm paying my bills on time, I can have stellar credit. You know, I can have the high credit, I mean, the, 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 the high score is 850. It's no higher for me or anyone else, you know, it's 850. And they could have that score. Okay. Corey, anything you want to add to that? Just going to say, to add, add to what Lee is saying, to piggyback off of, it just goes back to those founding principles and just of discipline. Discipline. Don't don't spend what you don't have. And if you do have it, you know, let it stand out there a day or two, then pay it off. Well, how about this, Corey, and, and both of you? If you're not able to pay, isn't it wise to at least contact that creditor and let them know? That's very wise, very wise, because some of them, some of them are, are nicer than what people know. They did this whole thing, this uh, thing where they said, you know, we just call and ask for a lower rate. Well, th actually, some of them really do. They, some credit cards will actually lower your rate. And so, yeah, pay something, even if you have to borrow a little something to pay them, because no one knows that you borrowed from Joe Smith, you know, but everybody knows that you owe MasterCard. Now, uh, are, are there credit unions and banks that offer special services for the poor? Are those who are less fortunate? You know, the only place that I've ever seen that, that offered, credit unions to me are always uh, accessible to uh, low income. Have always been, and I think they always will be, meaning that the, the deposit that you have to put in there, you know, is usually at $5, so yes, they are. Okay. And then as far as programming and getting you in there, they do have, uh, they do have programs to help you become bankable. Okay, okay. Now, I think this is a very important issue here also. How do we get those who are less fortunate away from payday loans oh, yeah. and rent-to-own stores? 
Yeah. Seem like when you drive through yeah. uh, the, uh, many of the urban areas, you can find one on almost every corner. How do we get those who are less fortunate away from that? Right, and that is a pet peeve with 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 us, um, the, with the payday loans. And we are you, you do it a few different ways, but and you keep it simple. You start with the young generation telling them right now, the 15 year olds, the 13 year olds, the 14 year olds, because they have their parents' ears. You know, they, they can advise as well. And so you, you work with them as well as the older people. And you say, you know, you let them know. What I found that really works is when you tell them what the facts are. The facts are is the average interest rate is anywhere between 23% and maybe 24%. Payday loans, 300%, 400%. When people hear that, that makes a difference to them. The only thing, reason they are going there because they're not really paying attention to the cost. Okay. Corey, very briefly, Anything else you want to add to that? I was just going to say in three words to sum up your question, education and awareness. Thank you. Now, if people want to get more information, how can they get it? From you us? Are, yes. Oh, well, they can call our line, and, and we, we are uh, excited to get calls. It's, what's the phone The number, number? is 414-755-0788, or they can contact our local chapter at www.nabainc.org. Thank you so much for joining us on this extremely important topic. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Before we close tonight, we'd like to tell you that Tommy Walls, the young man we featured in last week's show, has now won the Wisconsin Youth of the Year Award for the Boys and Girls Club of America and will go on to compete regionally. And that wraps up this edition of Black Nouveau. As always, be safe and faith. Get well. We really miss you. Good night.